message about climate change and what we must do to combat it is usually one of doom and gloom. The things we have to give up. The sacrifices we all have to make to save the planet. The economic costs and the price we have to pay. What if this wasn't the whole story? What if there was actually some good news? Well, of course, much of the focus on climate change has been on the adverse effects of climate change, very understandably. But what we were concerned to do was to look for strategies that might be win-win strategies. In other words, where we could reduce greenhouse gas emissions quite substantially at the same time as directly improving public health. So over and above any benefits that might occur as a result of reduced climate change. Andy Haynes was the lead author on a series of papers addressing the neglected question of health and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which was published in November 2009. The work that we did was really looking at four different sectors which are responsible between them for a a high proportion of greenhouse gas emissions. Here's what he and his fellow researchers found. About half the world's population relies on very basic cook stoves and other open indoor fires, which burn fuel very inefficiently. These not only produce greenhouse gases and black carbon, a serious contributor to the melting of glaciers in particular, but these stoves are also causing indoor pollution. This build-up of particulates and other pollutants in the home is responsible for serious respiratory diseases such as pneumonia. This is particularly deadly for children. Around a million children die every year of respiratory infection caused or exacerbated by burning fuel in this way. There is something that can be done. Using low emission stoves could not only reduce the amount of greenhouse gases produced, but also reduce the health impact dramatically. This is one of the strongest links between health and combating climate change and could potentially save millions of lives. But it's not the only one. In the developed world, household energy comes mainly in the form of gas or electricity. Most of the electricity we use is generated centrally in power stations. However, Producing the electricity that we rely on has the unfortunate side effect of producing large amounts of greenhouse gases. Coal-fired power stations in particular also emit airborne particles that can cause damage to the respiratory system. Switching to low carbon electricity, whether by reducing use of coal or increasing the use of renewable energy sources like solar or wind, would cut the incidence of respiratory and heart disease as well as lung cancer in adults, especially in China and India. Reducing carbon emissions from transport is an obvious step to take. In the UK alone, it accounts for about a quarter of CO2 emissions each year. Clearly, the more car trips we replace with cycling and walking, the better. There are obvious health benefits here, such as less heart disease, the increased fitness that cycling and walking bring, as well as a reduction in weight-related problems. There are also less obvious health benefits. Reduced levels of depression, less chance of developing breast cancer, lower risk of diabetes and protection against dementia, to name a few. Policies that get people out of their cars and onto their bikes or feet are likely to mean safer streets. With fewer motorists on the road, traffic danger is reduced. It could be a win-win situation for climate and health.
The idea that we need to eat less meat to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is not new, but here are the facts. Animal farming accounts for around 8 to 9 percent of greenhouse gases, and that's without taking into account the damage done by deforesting areas in order to keep livestock and to grow the foodstuffs they eat. A big problem in areas such as the Amazon rainforest. A reduction in the amount of meat we eat will have a direct impact on the amount of greenhouse gases being released in the atmosphere. So what about our health? Animal products contribute a large amount of saturated fat to our diet. Reducing consumption by just 30% could cut the incidence of heart disease, the biggest killer in the UK, by around 15%, preventing thousands of deaths. Cutting saturated fat consumption could reduce obesity, and by eating less red and processed meat, we may cut some cancer rates. It seems then the message about combating climate change isn't all bad news. So I think this puts a much more positive light on some of the strategies and policies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And also, one of the implications is that the benefits, the public health benefits, would partly offset uh, some of the increased costs of, of some of these strategies. And that hasn't been taken into account in, uh, in these discussions around greenhouse gas policies. Making these changes to our lives is about making the world a better place in all sorts of ways. What's good for the health of the planet is good for our health as well.